I'm Ryan from ExtremeTerrain.com and in this video we're going to be doing a fairly basic build on the Jeep behind me. This is a 2013 four-door Sahara and it's going to be getting a lift in wheels and tires. But in this video, first things first, we're going to show you what size tires come on this Jeep from the factory and how much clearance you have in stock trim. We're then going to be installing a bigger set of wheels and tires before we install the lift kit to show you what kind of issues you may run into running a big wheel and tire on a otherwise stock Jeep. And then finally, we'll install that lift kit and show how the lift kit and running the proper size lift with the proper tires can alleviate some of those issues that might come up. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can check out some detailed product videos on everything we're gonna be installing on the Jeep behind us. But for now, let's jump into how this Jeep is set up in stock trim. So like I said, this Jeep is a 2013 Sahara, and the reason that Sahara is important is because the Rubicons did sit just a little bit higher from the factory, and they also came with a slightly larger tire from the factory. But this, as it stands in stock trim, is a Sahara, has a set of 32-inch tires on it, and as you can see, plenty of clearance here. You have plenty of clearance from the tire to the bottom of the flare, in the back here to the flare to the bumper up front, and when you turn the wheel all the way lock to lock, you have plenty of clearance between the control arm and the frame in the back and the bumper and the frame in the front. So absolutely no clearance issues with a factory tire and an otherwise factory Jeep, which is exactly what you would expect, right? This came off the assembly line floor like this. You wouldn't expect it to have any clearance problems, and we certainly don't. If you wanted to install a slightly larger tire on this Jeep, go up to say a 33 inch tire. If you went with something a little bit wider, you may end up with some rubbing issues, but I don't think you'll have a lot of issues up and down, especially if you're staying on the road. And on the JKs, they were actually known to fit a 35 inch tire, even with just a small leveling kit. Now, if you did want to go off-road, disconnect sway bars, have a lot of articulation, you may end up with some rubbing in that scenario, but you could fit them, especially on the street. Really, the sweet spot for this Jeep is right around a three to three and a half inch lift if you do want to run a set of 35s, and that's what the plan is for this Jeep. So what we're going to do now is throw the set of 35s on this Jeep. We're going to show you what kind of clearance issues you may end up with if you decided to run that combination, and then finally, we'll install the lift kit on the Jeep and show you exactly how it clears up all those issues. So we just got the 35s installed on the Jeep and this is a set of Dick Sepik Extreme Country 315 70 by 17s on some fuel 17 inch wheels. So this is going to be a pretty extreme tire by Dick Sepik. It says it right there in the name. This is going to be a mud terrain tire. And the difference between a mud terrain and an all terrain is really the size of these lugs here, the space in between them. They're designed to get great traction in the mud and off road. Over on road, they're not gonna wear quite as well as an all terrain tire and they're usually gonna be a little bit noisier. So there's definitely that trade off. So once we get these last lug nuts tightened up, we're gonna get the Jeep on the ground, do the same thing we did with the factory tires, turn lock to lock to show you what kind of clearance we have with a big set of 35s like this with a stock suspension. So we got the Jeep on the ground with the 35 inch tire installed and first impressions, I think it looks really good. I'm always a big fan of a slightly larger tire on a smaller lift, that sort of low center of gravity styling. So I really like the look of this. And if you are just going to be staying on the road and not doing a lot of off-roading, not disconnecting sway bars and expecting a lot of articulation, as you can see, you got plenty of space here. You have a good bit of space in the back here. You are a little bit close to that bumper. And when we did turn the steering wheel lock to lock, we did have some interference between the tire and the splash shield underneath the front bumper. But if you really wanted to, you could rip the splash shield off and you really wouldn't have any major clearance issues running this setup. Now, if you do go off-road, you do disconnect the sway bars, you expect a lot of flex, you are gonna end up with some issues. You're going to definitely have some clearance issues between the fender flare and the top of the tire. So again, you can run this setup if you do plan on staying on the road, but off-road, this is not going to do you very much good at all. And this is with a 35-inch tire. On a 37-inch tire, you would not be able to run that. Even on the road without a lift kit, you are going to have some pretty serious clearance issues. Now what we're gonna do is take you out on the road with the 35s and the stock suspension to see what kind of issues we might run into with a little bit of a flexing situation or just cruising around on the street. 
So we got the Jeep outside here in a situation that simulates an off-road situation. Obviously, we're still here in the parking lot, but if you were off-road and you were flexing, this is something that you might see on your Jeep. And as you can see, this back left tire here is completely stuffed up into the wheel well, making really hard contact in a couple of different places, and there's still room to go. So if you were in an even tougher off-road situation, you'd really be able to put that tire up into the body and do some damage. So what we're gonna do is flip around to the front side of the Jeep there. We'll take a look at that front right tire, see how close we are up there. So up front here, you can see the situation is a little bit different. We don't have quite the same hard contact that we did out back, but I did stick my head underneath the Jeep and there is still a good bit of space between the Jounce bumper and the Jounce plate, which means this axle can still move up, especially if you have the sway bars disconnected in an off-road situation. And if that were the case, you would be making a lot of contact up here, just like we are in the back. So I would not recommend running a big set of 35 inch tires on a Jeep without a lift that's gonna be going off-road a lot. So what we're gonna do now is take this Jeep out on the road and see how much rubbing we have during normal everyday driving. So now we're just gonna do a little bit of low speed maneuvering around the parking lot here. We're expecting to hear and feel some rubbing because that's what we saw when we were inside there. And indeed, as you turn over to the lock, you do get some rubbing. Now, because we're just rubbing on that air damp, we're really not causing any sort of damage. It's more of an annoyance than anything else. And of course, that air damp does get removed very, very easily if we wanted to rip it off. And if that weren't there, we wouldn't have any sort of clearance issues at all just driving around, even in tight circles around the parking lot here. So keep that in mind. If you do want to run a big tire like this, these will fit pretty well on the street if you remove that air damp you're not gonna have too many issues. So driving in a straight line here at normal driving speed, not really anticipating any sort of major issues. And even though these tires do fill out the wheel wells, we're not expecting to see enough motion of the axle during normal driving like this that the tire's gonna travel up and actually bump into the inner fender. And the only time you're going to run into any sort of clearance issues with these tires on this Jeep without a lift is turn hard over lock to lock or when you are flexing hard off-road. That being said, by adding the lift kit, you're not only going to be able to drive on the road with zero problems, but also be able to take this thing off-road, disconnect the sway bars and flex hard, get a ton of traction and a ton of articulation all without any clearance issues with these big tires. All that being said, let's get this thing inside, get it on the lift, and start installing the lift kit. So Tony's been hard at work installing the lift kit on this Jeep, and as you can see, he's pretty much done other than bolting the tires up to this thing, which we're gonna get to in just a second. But first, I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the components that are included in the lift kit and how they're gonna help us run those 35 inch tires without having any sort of clearance issues, whether we're on road or off road. So this is going to be the TerraFlex three inch lift kit with the 9550 vehicle specific shocks and a front track bar. So it's a very, very complete lift kit. You of course are going to get four new coil springs. That's going to provide you with your new taller ride height. You're also going to get these 9550 vehicle specific shocks, which is a shock that I like a lot for any JK, any TJ. They're actually valved for the weight of your vehicle. So these are two door, four door specific, and they're going to provide a really comfortable ride on the road as well as really good performance off-road. So you're gonna get a lot out of those shocks. I really like those a lot. They're also going to be a nitrogen charged shock, which means you're not going to get as much foaming or cavitation within the shock fluid that you would with a hydraulic shock. So even if you're working these things really hard off-road, you're not gonna end up with any shock fade. So again, can't say enough great things about those shocks, really high quality stuff. We're also going to have a new set of uh, sway bar end links for not only the front of the Jeep, but also the back of the Jeep. These ones are going to be longer, of course, than the factory ones for that new taller ride height, keeping your sway bar angles a little bit closer to where you would want them to be. We're also going to have a new track bar up front here. This is a forged track bar from TerraFlex, so it's going to be very, very strong. You're not gonna get any sort of flex out of that. You're not gonna bend it. And of course, it is adjustable so that you can completely recenter the front axle underneath the Jeep. At back, we have a track bar bracket and it is one of two track bar brackets that TerraFlex offers. This one is very, very stout. It attaches in three different locations to the axle and that is very important because when you move that mounting point of the track bar up, you have a lot of leverage there and you can end up with a little bit of motion on some of the other brackets that can actually feel like a sway in the back of the Jeep. 
which is very uncomfortable, especially at highway speed. This attaching in three different spots means it's going to be very, very solid. You're not going to get any motion out of that. And it does have two mounting holes for the track bar itself, so you can really dial in the roll center of the Jeep. Along with those main components, you also have a new set of control arms. Now, these are going to be lower control arms in the front and upper control arms in the back, so you're going to get a total of four arms. Up here, the ones that go in the bottom are going to adjust your caster angle, which makes the Jeep not feel like it has that tendency to wander that you can have when your caster is thrown out of spec by a lift kit. And you're also going to be able to set your pinion angle with that control arm, which is going to ensure you're not going to have any weird vibrations or premature driveline wear. And then out back, it's going to be all about the pinion angle again, making sure you don't have any sort of vibrations. Now, those are the main components in this kit, but it also includes all the other stuff that you're going to need to get it installed, including some uh, brake line extension brackets up in the front and in the back, and all of the little bits of hardware that you need to get this installed on the Jeep. So very, very complete kit. And the most important thing about it is it is going to allow us to run those 35 inch tires with plenty more clearance than we had with the stock suspension. So let's go ahead and throw the 35s back on the Jeep. We'll get this thing on the ground, take a look at it, and then go for a little bit of a drive. So we got the Jeep on the ground here with the 35s installed, and I have to say it looks really, really good, even better than it did with no lift and the 35s. I feel like this is really in proportion. Everything looks really great. And more importantly, it's going to work really, really well. We're going to eliminate a lot of those clearance issues that we had running the big tire with no lift. We also threw a set of 37s on the Jeep with this three inch lift kit. And to be honest with you, they're just a little bit too big. You are going to end up running into a lot of the same clearance issues that you had with 35s and no no lift when you run 37s on a three inch lift. So again, three inches of lift, that three, three and a half inch range is really perfect for 35s. And I think you can see that here, it looks great and it's gonna work really well also. So what we're gonna do now is take the Jeep outside, flex it on the same hill in the same way that we did before. We'll show you how much more clearance we have, especially in this back corner. So here we are outside flexing in the same spot. And as you can see, there is a ton more clearance with the 35s and stock suspension. We are making hard contact here. Now we have a good bit of room. I checked underneath and there's still a little bit of space between the jounce bumper and where that jounce bumper will hit. So there's a little bit more room to travel if you were in a truly off-road situation and really had the suspension twisted up. But as you can see, there's plenty of room here still that the axle can move up without the tire making contact with the fender. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. More than enough clearance in the back there. Let's pop up to the front and see what it looks like there. As you can see up front here, we have plenty of clearance. That's what we expected, even with the 35s on a factory suspension. As long as you have that sway bar connected, we had a good bit of room and we have even more now that we have the three inch lift installed. Of course, this picture would be very different if we disconnected the sway bar, but we will still have a lot of room. Even if you disconnect that sway bar, even if you go off road, you're gonna have plenty of room here. You can see how much room this tire has to travel up here before it makes any sort of contact. And there is less space than that between that jounce bumper and that jounce plate. So as you can see, well put together lift kit by TerraFlex here, plenty of room to fit the 35s that we have installed on the Jeep. So we're gonna go for a little bit of a drive now, just make sure we don't have any clearance issues when we're cruising around. So now we'll just take the Jeep for a quick little spin here and see what kind of clearance issues we might have. We're not expecting a ton of them, but we may still have a little bit of an issue between the splash shield and those big tires. So we do some tight circles in the corner here. Nothing moving forward to the right, try to the left. No issues there, but sometimes when you put the Jeep in reverse, just because it loads the suspension differently, we may have a problem there. So let's go ahead and try the same thing in reverse. I'm not hearing any rubbing going that way. There we go, a little bit. That's what I was expecting, a, li a little bit of rubbing still. So in reverse, hard lock to the left. How often are you gonna be doing that? Not a lot and also not at a very high speed. However, if that is something that bothers you, you can always go ahead and remove that splash shield. It really doesn't do much for you. So you can pop it off, get it out of the way, and then you'll have absolutely zero rubbing. And as we saw before on the hill, you're also not going to have any rubbing up and down because of the additional clearance from the three inch lift kits. Other than that, driving down the road here, hitting some bumps, not anticipating any issues at all, and certainly none to be found. If we have that much clearance when we're flexing, you're certainly going to have a ton of clearance when you're driving on the road. There's no way that you're gonna have that much axle travel when you're driving on a road. Even the bumpiest of roads aren't going to cause that for you. So this is a really, really nice setup. That three to three and a half inch uh, lift range on a JK is just perfect for running a set of 35 inch tires. It's a really great combination. It looks good, it performs really well, and this particular lift kit by TerraFlex does a really
really nice job of being very, very complete and also being made up of some very high quality components. So you're gonna get something that is going to last you a good long time and ride really comfortably with this kit. So comment below, let me know what you think of this setup, what you're currently running on your Jeep, what you like, what you don't like, or what you're currently shopping for. And also make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. That way you can check out some detailed product videos on everything we installed on this Jeep.